Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the best products to sell on Amazon in the spring of 2022. Well, depending on when you're watching this, you're like, oh, well, that's kind of a little ways away. Why are we talking about that already? Because there's lead time, there's shipping time. So when you're thinking about a seasonal product that you wanna sell and you wanna start building a seasonal portfolio on Amazon that has your spring products, your summer products, your fall and your winter products, and then it has specific products for each holiday so that you can crush it pretty much no matter what month it is on top of all your other Amazon products, be sure to stick around to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe down below. Let's try and get this video to 250 likes. That would help so much. So as a small YouTube, I appreciate that greatly. Other than that, guys, let's get into it. So I bet there's a feature in Helium 10 that you didn't even use at any point of your Amazon journey when you should have. Let's put this like how we would set it up normally. If you watch my channel a lot, you'll probably know pretty much the exact criteria that I use a lot. Um, I do change it up quite a bit, but there's some fundamental principles about how to find products that I've kind of specialized in over the past couple of years. A lot of people know me for product research. Um, 3,000 to 9,000 price, we're gonna go 15 to 90. Um, review count over 300. And then down here, we're gonna go categories, boom, 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 boom. Uh, industrial, home and kitchen, uh, patio supply. Okay, cool. Now, what we wanna see is we wanna to go to best sales period and we wanna select one of them in the spring. April, okay, April's in the spring, right? Or is it March? I don't remember the solstices. April, I think, is the start of spring. We're gonna to go to April and we're gonna hit search. So we've just run through a general list of criteria, which we didn't spend a lot of time explaining, but what we are gonna explain is how to find products to sell in the spring because as winter approaches, we're in fall right now of 2021, um, which by the way, you're probably looking you're like, well, this is for 2021. Yeah, but these products are cyclical. The ones that did really well in April this year will sell really well in April again next year. So we're gonna look through all these ideas and we're gonna try and figure out if any of them apply to a private label business model and if we can sell them successfully in the upcoming year. So garden hoops for raised beds. We're gonna open that up. And really quickly before we analyze anything on Amazon and look at how markets are performing and pick a product to sell uh, next year, start working on it now. Let me just quickly cover categories. What you need to look for are categories that specifically make sense for that time of year. So for instance, like home and kitchen is fine because there's things around the house that you'd be doing. Industrial and scientific um, kind of makes sense in some situations. Patio lawn garden is the huge one, right? Because what are a lot of people starting to do in the spring? Whether they're starting up their gardens, they're starting to work outside, they're working on their lawn. Um, same thing with sports and outdoors. That might be a really good one to select. And yeah, we can select that one. Tools and home improvement, all those things. Like people, like the springtime is basically synonymous with like motivation and working outside. It's like what the spring is for. So like you're stuck inside for all, all you guys on SoCal don't know what we're talking about, but stuck inside all winter, it's pretty cold. You're like, I really don't have much motivation to go outside. And then all of a sudden it's 65 out, it's 70 out, it's sunny, there's flowers. Let's go do stuff outside. We're gonna try to find products to sell on Amazon that kind of capture the essence of that feeling. So we opened that one already, garden hoops. We're gonna open up a couple. Worm composting starter, okay, sure, fine. We'll leave that on Amazon. And then we could do something like, I mean, a lot of these sound great. Black gold soil, that sounds like a brand. I'm not gonna do that one. Animal print shower curtain set with rugs, pretty random. Grease fitting kit, flat rocks, face pills for sleeping down, moon wind chimes, very specific. Open that one up. Um, again, brand, barn stars for outside. Check it out. Sprinkler manifold. I don't know what that is. We're gonna check that out too. So I just basically, go through here and I start looking for products that sound like they would be good in the spring. I'm using a little bit of bias towards ones that sound like they're for outdoors or lawn and garden. Square tubing connector, sure. I might have to do with gardening or something. And it doesn't have to do with gardening though. That's the whole point. Could it have to do with camping, right? A lot of people are getting out and starting to camp again. Glove dispenser, wall mount. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, grill canopy replacement cover, paint depth gauge a grub hoe, sympathy silks. All right, we're probably good, we're good, we're good. So we can come up here and we could start looking at worm composting starter. All right, tell me how you're gonna start shipping live wriggly worms. 
on Amazon. I mean, are we? Is this really the market? It's live worms. I don't think I don't think we could private label this, can we? Yeah. This is a bad market. Bad example. Um, especially, I don't think they'd hold up too well <laughs> getting shipped from China. Hanging out in an Amazon FBA facility. Man, that would smell by the time it got to the customer. Uh, you guys ever smell hot worms? Oh my god. That is probably the worst smell in the world. When you like grow up as a little kid, you worm fish a lot. Like worms and bobbers. It's like the first technique you learn. Oh my god. The worst. The worst. The worst. Um, okay. Anyway, moon wind chimes. A lot of them are the exact same one. The exact same one. This is crazy. Why are they all the same? So anytime I see this, guys, I actually see opportunity. When I see a bunch of Me Too sellers, <laughs> like with pictures that like don't even fit the TOS of Amazon, it just like screams amateur beginner seller. So immediately my mind goes to um, new design, better listing, better packaging, better branding, better photography, and like taking over the market. That's honestly just what I started thinking of. So many of these are so similar to each other and like reviews start to matter less when they're all the same because you throw up a new design with 20 reviews, 10 reviews, and you get sales just because you're the only one that's different on the whole page. Um, so right now, when you look at sales, I wanted to pull this up for a specific reason. Some of these will be doing okay because not all products that specifically sell extremely well in the spring are only going to sell well in the spring. But if their primary best sales time is in the spring when people are like out in their yard and like, you know what we need? We need a moon wind chime. That would go good under that oak tree. It's a very specific customer. It's not going to translate right now. Right, because the best sales period was in April. So we look at one of these listings and then we go down to our little sales history graph from Keep Our Helium 10. If you don't have Helium 10, there'll be a link in the description um, to get that software for a discount. So you don't have to pay full price. So that's 2020. Then we go to 2021. It's February, March, and April. It's so right here is like March and April. It starts going up over the summer. Or this is April actually, right? That's April 3, 21. What? Oh, it's like the backwards date thing. I'm like, there's not 22 months. What the hell's going on here? Um, and then really crushing it in May actually. So maybe May and April and March are the best sales period. And then over the summer, they're quite a bit higher. And now in the fall, it seems like they're working pretty well again as well. So last year in like November, they were doing extremely well. On um, December for gifts, that's just Q4 sales. And then originally they launched in May, they were doing great. Um, so that actually makes a lot of sense. This one actually looks like it's going to sell really well in the spring and then okay throughout the summer and then really well for Q4 as gifts. So that makes a lot of sense. That's kind of what you want to do for like several of these listings. Go see, do they truly sell the best in April? In this situation, um, some of, a lot of these are actually still selling well now. So it's not a truly seasonal product that only sells well in one year, uh, one time of the year. Just like I'd imagine these moon stars, moon stars. Anytime I see the word moon, I just can't get it off of my mind. Um, anytime I see these star, what are these called? Stars, star for barn. Okay, <laughs> like losing my patience over here. Um, the whole point of this specific technique is to find products that sell really well in one specific month. And so what that'll usually look like, like right now, if we looked up a Santa hat or like a specific like Christmas decoration, you'd almost see no sales whatsoever. We're too far away. So what you need to do is create your level of knowledge about how many sales are going to be in that market from that sales history graph. That's the point that I was trying to make there. Um, so we start looking at a market like this. There are some big sellers here. And then one thing that I noticed right away, as we scroll up and down this page, all of these products or all of these positions are filled with relevant products. So that's probably not something we want to get into because the customers already have plenty of designs to choose from. At the end of the day, there's like not a whole lot that's changing here, but hopefully what I did over the last 10 minutes is shift your focus slightly to start thinking about a new area of opportunity. So when we start thinking about product research, we immediately get like a somewhat of a sense of like, we want immediately like immediate gratification. We want to find something that sells really well all the time. We want to get it ranked. 
But if you can just start to think about the future of your business a little bit more and think about like, how can we boost sales across every month so that every month there's something that performs extremely well for us on top of our existing portfolio of just non-seasonal products whatsoever. There's a lot of reasons to get excited throughout the year. Every time, Mardi Gras, we got our Mardi Gras products crushing it. Um, you know, Memorial Day, we got a Memorial Day product, it was going great. Then Christmas, I got tw 20 Christmas products. This, this is gonna be a, a crazy Q4. So. There's a reason to get excited about doing product research in a new way where you're looking for products for the future. And then what I would suggest is every year when there is a seasonal product that you see, it's like the worst strategy is like when you're doing product research, you see a seasonal product, you go, oh, it's seasonal. And then you just stop looking at it. Who cares if you make 20 grand a year selling one product and it sells really well in one period fantastic, right? Why would you not want to add that onto your existing Amazon sales? Don't just kick them to the door. Create a seasonal list of products just like you create a non-seasonal list of products. You're going to literally double your product ideas and then go, okay, my goal is by the next 18 months to have one product that sells really well in all of the main um, holidays in the United States or something. It's a pretty simple goal. I mean, how many really are there? You got like Easter, 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas. On that note, I think we're gonna wrap it up here for today. So thanks so much for watching today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss videos like this one in the future. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much, guys. Later.